All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to evaluate a really cool integral with an amazing method. So in another video, I have done the integral of ln of sine, and you can use that to evaluate the integral of ln of cosine, but here I wanna take it up a notch and evaluate the integral of ln of cosine squared. And you'll see it's actually not that as bad as you think because it's basically just based on the following identity, which says the following. It says that ln of two cosine of x can be written very elegantly as a Fourier series, namely as the sum from n from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over n cosine of two nx. So there's no pi here because it's really on the interval from a minus pi over two to pi over two. In other words, if you express this function in terms of its Fourier coefficients, the coefficients are very easy. It's just plus or minus one over n, more or less. And I will show this identity in another video and it's also, this derivation is super neat because you think you would have to use Fourier series for that, but actually that proof doesn't involve Fourier series at all, which is insane. It just involves a very simple power series. So I really invite you to look at the video and you can find the link in my description. But the question is, how can we use this? Well, since this is a Fourier series, we can actually use Parseval's identity, which simply says, if you take the sum of the squares of those terms, then it becomes the integral of this term squared. So in other words, the integral from minus pi over two to pi over two of ln of two cosine of x, squared dx just equals to the sum from 1 to infinity of the absolute value of this n plus 1 over n squared. But n is positive, so this becomes n, and the absolute value of minus 1 to the something is 1, because this is just plus or minus 1. So we end up getting the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, which is the famous Basel problem where I also have a video on. And this thing, it equals to pi squared over 6. And we'll need this identity to derive that integral. And lastly, I forgot to say, well, we have to normalize this. We have to divide this by this pi over 2. Good, and essentially just use that identity to, um, uh, to find then the integral of ln of cosine. So we're almost done. The only thing we need to do is get rid of this two and sort of get rid of this minus pi over two. But the minus pi over two, it's not a big problem because this is an even function. So, and the integral of an even function for minus pi over two to pi over two, I think like x squared plus one or something, the area under this curve for minus pi over two to pi over two equals two times the area under this curve from zero to pi over two. So essentially this gibberish equals two times the integral from zero to pi over two of what we want. So what we get then is two times the integral from zero to pi over two of ln of two cosine of x da, 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 squared dx over still uh, pi over two. So if you want two over pi equals to the Basel problem. So pi squared over six which tells us you can just, uh, you know, 
This is 4 over pi, multiply by pi over 4, and you get the integral of what we want is equal to pi squared over 6 times uh, pi over 4, which becomes pi cubed over 24. Another question is, how can we get rid of this 2? Well, use the fact that ln AB is ln of A plus ln of B. So this is ln of 2 plus ln of cosine of x squared dx. And then expand this out so we get the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of ln of 2 squared plus 2. Uh, someone told me you can pronounce it as ln, so ln of 2 ln of cosine of x plus precisely what we want ln of cosine of x squared dx is pi cubed over 24 and then, well this is a constant so this becomes ln of 2 squared times the length of the interval pi over 2 plus 2 ln of 2, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, ln of cosine of x, dx, plus what we want, integral from 0 to pi over 2, ln of cosine of x, squared, dx, equals pi cubed over 24. All right, now this thing here, I've actually evaluated in another video. I did it with sine, but it's entirely the same thing with cosine, because cosine is pi over two, like sine of pi over two minus x. So this thing, I, from what I remember, the answer then becomes, yeah, and it is uh, negative, so it's negative pi over two ln of two. And, um, let's see, and then what do we get? So, we get ln of 2 squared, squared times pi over 2. Then, minus ln of 2 squared times 2 times pi over 2, so minus ln of 2 squared times pi, plus the answer that we want, ln of cosine of x squared dx equals pi cubed over 24. And look, we have this common factor, ln of 2 squared, pi minus, so pi over 2 minus pi, it's minus pi over 2, so minus pi over 2, ln of 2 squared plus our answer equals pi cubed over 24, which tells us our answer, which is the integral from 0 to pi over 2, ln of cosine of x squared dx is just equal to pi cubed over 24 plus pi over 2 ln of 2 squared. Oh my god! This is really cool. <laughs> uh, in particular, so um, what did I want to say? So even though ln of sine of x was not that bad to integrate, even though this has a square, it's also not too bad to integrate. And we get this beautiful formula, which rests on this beautiful expansion, which I invite you to watch the video. It's also amazing. And yeah, if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.